this is what you want me to have on. Okay. So there we are. We are live. We're back live. And I am saying welcome, everyone. It is good to see you here. Welcome to Bloom in the Desert Ministries, United Church of Christ and Reconciling Ministries Congregation. We do our very best to live up to the modern motto of the UCC that says, whoever you are and wherever you are in the journey of faith, you are welcome here. And, and so I am glad that you are here and I will try to stop paying attention to everything else that's going on in the room except for what I'm supposed to do. So let's, come on Kevin, right in here, right in here, back here. Thank you. I want to say that we light a candle at the beginning of our service as a symbol of Christ, the light of the world in our midst. And we also remember, and particularly in the gospel reading today, Jesus says, you are the light of the world. So we know that as we light this candle, it is a symbol for us during our worship time. It is a reminder. It is a um, source of illumination, a source of inspiration. And we also know that when we extinguish this candle at the end of our service, the light does not go out because we go out into the world and carry the ministry of this congregation and God's love out with us wherever we go. I also want to note that as we gather for Sunday worship, we acknowledge the sacred land on which our church operates. Human activity has been documented here in the Coachella Valley and the surrounding mountains for up to 5,000 years. This is the home and heritage of the Cahuilla people and locally the Agua Caliente tribe. We honor their ancestors, their heritage, and their dreams. And we remain committed and mindful uh, to be in good relations with them, knowing the unjust past that has been theirs uh, prior to that time. So we, want, we will do what we need to do in order to be in right relations. The United Church of Christ motto says, whoever you are and wherever you are in the journey of faith, you are welcome here. It's our intention to do our very best to welcome folks from a wide variety of perspectives and understandings and uh, experiences. Um, when we gather here, it's a, very, it's a unique group every single Sunday. It's never, ever, ever going to be exactly the same as it is right now. And so, you know, you can take a look around and see who you're with and know that we are doing our best to understand and welcome and, and appreciate the fact that people are gay and straight and bi in the ways in which folks couple and love one another. We know also that, uh, um, that gender identity is not a binary scale, but that uh, in God's creation, um, the reflection of all humanity is God and all humanity includes people who are cisgender, gender non-declaring, transgender, non-binary, all of the ways in which people present themselves are the ways in which we want to welcome one another, not a way that we would assume identity about anyone in particular. So let that be our, that is our mission and continues to be our, our, our uh, task. Um, as we gather uh, when we're here. Now we do know that uh, every once in a while there are people who are here with us for the very first time on a Sunday morning. It is never our intention to embarrass anyone. Don't get afraid, don't, go, don't get scared. All we want to do is simply be able to welcome you. And so if this is your very first time with Bloom on a Sunday morning, would you mind simply raising your hand? And to you we say, welcome. And we also invite everyone to join us in the hospitality area after worship for some refreshments and conversation, uh, that sort of thing, catching up with one another as well as welcoming folks uh, who are here for the first time. And those of you who are online, we um, say to you, if you've, we hope that you'll be checking in in the comment section and saying hello to those who are online. Um, and and uh, you know, uh, uh, letting people know where you're from. If this is your first time and you feel comfortable, please say so, and we know that people will welcome you warmly. We also note that if you have prayer concerns, those who are online, you may enter those, keeping in mind privacy concerns. 
But you may, uh, your joys and thanksgivings, you may uh, enter those in the comments section and someone is monitoring that and we'll try to capture what we can include in the service later on. There are little red pads um, that some uh, have already signed into and others um, uh, may. We appreciate uh, all of the information that you're able to give. Sometimes even it's helpful if people who have been here a million times fill in all the information because that, in, that, uh, that helps us double check some things from time to time. Um, the information that you share there is for the use of Bloom in the Desert Ministries only and we appreciate whatever it is um, you're willing to share with us. We're grateful for your doing that. We're grateful for the persons who are serving in our, in our worship leadership today, uh, Tim, Loretta and Tim Martin, um, in our uh, liturgy, and Jim Nixon, uh, also as readers and, and uh, in, in our liturgy. Um, we're grateful also for Megan and Jack Cassette as they are um, our ushers today, Mike Shear and, and uh, Jason being out in the parking lot with the parking lot welcome uh, as we could and uh, 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 Carlos and Logan being here to set up since 7.30 this morning and Hugo making sure the voice and video are happening in the room as well as online. And we're, there's a lot of moving parts and we're grateful for all of those persons. There are activities you can see in the bulletin those who might have an announcement, if you'd be coming forward at this time. There are activities in the bulletin that you can see regarding the book club, uh, choir rehearsal. Uh, Bible Bites is not meeting this week because of a special other meeting. Uh, Pastor on the porch on Thursday, the Bloom, I'm not going to say that one, and other people are going to take care of those. So every once in a while we have Bloom specific, very short announcements. Uh, that need to be made. So if you would come forward to do those now, come on forward, Gary, and tell your name and who you, you know, who you're representing. The um, Social Justice Committee. Uh, next Sunday is Super Bowl Sunday, and we're having a Super Bowl Sunday, uh, collecting uh, gently used shoes and uh, if you and also socks and there'll be a container at the door thank you thank you Gary I'm Carl Toland I am Bloom's clerk and according to our bylaws is uh, advisable to inform uh, the members and others that would like to know that uh, next Sunday after worship will be our 18th annual meeting following worship. And uh, there were reports available uh, printed out on the welcome table coming in. Uh, however, other members and associate members have been emailed these same reports, but uh, if you're not on that list, please, if you want to have one of these reports, uh, pick one up on the welcome table on the way out. There will be more of them available next Sunday. So hope to see you for the annual meeting next Sunday. Thank you. Good morning. I'm Paul Gibb, uh, and along with Elaine Meyerhofer, we are the co-chair of the Spring Fling 14 event coming up in five weeks. You may have seen these posters. Well, these are mini posters, but we have bigger posters too of our event. It's first time in a couple of years that we will have been able, will be able to meet uh, in person. So I want to be sure and invite every one of you to come to our event. Um, it's going to be a, a different format this year. Um, instead of a hotel ballroom, we are converting the pavilion um, near the Palm Springs Swings Swim Center in the high school, uh, which is a large open space into a souk or a bazaar, um, a marketplace, um, whatever. You'll have to come and find out exactly what that is. But it is going to be a lot of fun and different. Um, along with, of course, our silent auction, there's going to be four different types of food vendors. Um, there's a nine-foot high, two-tall Tom. It's going to be there to entertain you, lift you up, lift your spirits upward. 
Um, we've got some, a couple of storytellers. Um, there's a gospel choir group calling from Los Angeles called the DC Six Singers. It's going to be a great fun. It's going to be a place where you can come and circulate around, talk with all of your friends. And first of all, bring your friends and make reservations and come to Spring Fling 14. I'm Kathy Humphrey, and I'm coordinating volunteers for Spring Fling. Um, the saying, Rev Kev had a bromide last week um, that didn't turn out to be quite true, but my bromide is many hands make light work. So if you are able to help out that evening or um, even ahead of time, please come and see me and let me know, and we'll find a job that will work for you. Thank you. Seeing no further announcements, I want to take a moment to welcome our piano musician today, Malcolm Swan, who is providing our uh, beautiful music today. Um, and, uh, you know, we know that Malcolm prepares and rehearses and gets ready for this time. And while this is not a concert or a recital, we do want to, in this moment, offer customary appreciation. So now is the time when we go from being scattered to, to gathering. We bring our heart and soul and mind and strength to this place for the worship of God and care for one another. Malcolm will provide a music for centering entitled Moment by Moment, and then we will be led in our opening worship by Loretta Martin. Good morning. Please rise as you are able for the responsive call to worship. As God shared our humanity in Jesus, God presented a new version of power. Power is not meant to be used to dominate. Power is meant to serve. We gather today to celebrate God's realm as love in our souls and actions. Love is the real gift of God's spirit among us. Shalom, salam, salam, grede, ping on, paz, mir, peace, amen. Please remain standing as you are able for our opening hymn, Gather Us In. Vanished away. See in the 
This is the time in our worship when, in faith, we open our hearts to ministry with our prayer for good and growth. In honor of Black History Month, please, please pray along silently as I read this, a prayer written by Mary McLeod Bethune, the founder of the National Council of Negro Women. Dear God, we are glad to be called your children and to dedicate our lives to the service that extends through willing hearts and hands to the betterment of all humanity. We send a cry of thanksgiving for people of all races, creeds, classes, and colors the world over, and pray that through the instrumentality of our lives, the spirit of peace, joy, fellowship shall circle the world. We know that this world is filled with discordant notes, but help us to unite our efforts that we may all join in one harmonious symphony for peace, community, justice, and equality of opportunity for all. Creative author of justice, receive now our silent prayers.
to all our silent prayers, let the people say amen. amen. Receive now these words of encouragement. God, who is our foundation and our eternal source of life, helps us find strength and trust for our discipleship journeys. And praise to God forever. Let us now receive the word. Please join in singing our response. Our Hebrew scripture reading is from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 58, verses 5 through 10. Is that the sort of fast that pleases me? A day when people humiliate themselves, hanging their heads like a reed, lying down on sackcloth and ashes, is that what you call fasting? A day acceptable to Yahweh? On the contrary, this is the sort of fast that pleases me. Remove the chains of injustice. Undo the ropes of the yoke. Let those who are oppressed go free and break every yoke you encounter. Share your bread with those who are hungry, and shelter homeless, poor people. Clothe those who are naked, and don't hide from the needs of your own flesh and blood. Do this, and your light will shine like the dawn, and your healing will break forth like lightning. Your integrity will go before you, and the glory of Yahweh will be your rear guard. Cry, and Yahweh will answer. Call, and God will say, I am here, provided you remove from your midst all oppression, finger-pointing, and malicious talk. If you give yourself to the hungry and satisfy the needs of the afflicted, then your light will rise in darkness and your shadow will become like noon. Here ends the Hebrew scripture lesson. As you're able, please rise for the reading of the gospel. The gospel reading today comes from the book of Matthew, chapter 5, verses 13 through 20. You are the salt of the earth, but what if salt were to lose its flavor? How could you restore it? It would be fit for nothing but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. You don't build a city on a hill, then try to hide it, do you? You don't light a lamp, then put it under a bushel basket, do you? No, you set it on a stand where it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, your light must shine before others so that they may see your good acts and give praise to your Abba God in heaven. Don't think I've come to abolish the law and the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. The truth is, until heaven and earth pass away, not the smallest letter of the law, not even the smallest part of a letter, will be done away with until it is all fulfilled. That's why whoever breaks the least significant of these commands and teaches others to do the same will be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. Whoever fulfills and teaches these commands will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. I tell you, unless your sense of justice surpasses that of the religious scholars and the Pharisees, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven. 
Here ends the reading of the gospel. This is the good news of Jesus Christ. Wow, that Isaiah passage is really something. I mean, if a church ever needed a mission statement, uh, all you got to do is adopt that, and, and, and that'll take care of it. Um, it is pretty amazing. It's one of the reasons that Isaiah is considered probably one of the greatest of the prophets. Um, and the thing about that is we have a m- complete misunderstanding of the word prophecy and prophets in Uh, like at least American English in the 20th century, second half of the 20th century, and that is that we think of a prophecy or a prophet as somebody telling the future. And that has to do with such things as the book Late Great Planet Earth coming out, all of the Tim LaHaye books, Left Behind, all of that business, which was big business, by the way, but all of that business, when in reality the term prophet and prophecy is entirely equivalent with what we would call commentary or commentator or the Eric Severide types. If anybody remembers Eric Severide, you know, the first television commentator, uh, the precursor in a good way of, you know, of, of uh, cable news talk shows as, as we have now, but the person that observes what's going on and comments about what's going on. And here we have Isaiah, the Eric Severide of 6,000 years ago. We have Isaiah commenting and telling exactly what the situation is. It is not about hanging your head and wearing sackcloth and ashes. It is about feeding the hungry, doing what you can to advocate for people. It is about what we have heard. And let us remember that when Jesus began his ministry, he um, was handed the book of the prophet, he was handed the book of the prophet Isaiah, and he read this, and that is when he talked about um, what, the, what his mission was in the beginning of uh, uh, the gospel to explain how Jesus was beginning his work. So, and it was totally consistent with this. So, if we are going to try to measure what we're doing, even as Lent approaches, you know, and this is one of the things where I, I oftentimes say Lent is not about giving something up. Lent is about doing something new. And if we were to say, I'm not going to hang my head, I'm not going to fast, it's not hard for me to say I'm not going to fast, I'm not going to wear sackcloth and ashes, I'm going to do something. And and here is a nice list to check. Let us pray. God bless us as we come together today. As we are gathered, uh, your people being in the midst of this world, We pray that the scriptures that we have speak to us. We pray that we speak to one another in ways that help and guide and nurture and improve and make the world a better place. As we are gathered here, we are surrounded by words on a page in our minds being sung and spoken. But we know that you are the word. The word that is logic, the word that is logos, the word that was in the beginning. And we pray that the word that you have for each of us as individuals is the word that we will receive in the midst of this service today. And so we continue to pray as the psalmist prayed so long ago that the meditations of our hearts and the words of my mouth are acceptable to you, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So there may be a moment in everyone's life like there was in mine when many of us realize that we are not likely to get a MacArthur Foundation Genius Grant. Recently I was reading the bio details of an author and they noted that she was the recipient of a MacArthur Foundation Genius Grant. And I remember thinking, well, I gotta face it. About this time in my life and career, one of those is not likely to come to me. I come from common stock. Most often I describe myself in terms of being from a fisher and farmer 
cultural heritage. We are very loving and intelligent people, but few, if any, geniuses are among us. I'll let you know when I meet one. One might call us salt of the earth types. You are the salt of the earth. That ordinary observation bestowed value and big responsibility. Many of us learned in school that before the days of electric refrigeration, salt was essential to preserve foods. In cooking class, you probably learned, or we probably learned, that a little more salt is usually a way to make the broth a little more tasty. If we put in too much salt, the late great Julia Child said, to soak it up by dropping a quarter of a raw peeled potato into the broth and only leave it in there long enough so that it doesn't break up. You take it out with a slotted spoon because you don't want all that starch added. But when it's ready and it's that soft, you take it out and you should have it seasoned just right. Bon appetit. <laughs> I must trust that many of us know this Bible verse already. We probably take solace in the affirmation that of our humble origins and our community utility as the salt of the earth. Maybe we've seen a needlepoint or a plaque or something online. We are glad that so long ago Jesus is said to have recognized our potential. Yes, there was a certain caution as well, and we read that. But the main point is noting our place in the soup. You are the salt of the earth. Now I imagine most of us have seen the television infomercials and considered the four easy payments. And we've heard, but wait, there's more. Well, guess what? There's more to Bible salt than we might think. So let's do as the psalmist did and taste and see. Years upon years of language development and scientific advances and changing customs mean that when a reference is made in the Bible, it does not always align with the words and language and the meanings of our day. When gospel writers presented Jesus saying something like, you are the salt of the earth, the audience then heard the words and thought of something other than tasty foods on the dinner table, or melting winter ice from the sidewalks and roads, or freezing homemade ice cream. If Rabbi Lazar was here talking about this, I figure he would tell us how salt was more meaningful to Israelites than a flavor enhancer for food or a blood pressure foe. The Hebrew Bible says Elisha threw salt in a body of water and healed the water, a spring, and healed the water by purifying it, perhaps softening it. Who knew Elijah was the first person to hear and respond to, hey, Culligan man? In a different Leviticus passage than homophobic preachers like to use, Moses told the Israelites to obey the salt law for the grain offerings. You shall season all your grain offerings with salt. You shall not let the salt of your covenant with your God be missing from your grain offering. With all your offerings, you shall offer salt. I'm going to read that again. You shall season your grain offerings with salt. You shall not let the salt of your covenant with your God be missing from your grain offering. With all your offerings, you shall offer salt. The book of Moses was basically saying, listen up, folks. Put some salt in your grain offering, even if it costs you more to do so. Scholars tell us salt purified and preserved the grain so that it lasted the, so that the offering to God lasted as long and as well or even better than the condition it maintained at home. 
The point was made. Every sacrifice offered, every offering made, should be pure, should be enduring, and should cost. Here's the scoop. Salt was valuable. It was a valuable commodity used to preserve and slow decay. Salt could be used as an antiseptic since it's free from contamination and harmful bacteria. Now maybe you've heard the term rubbing salt in the wound and thought, ow, 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 ow. And that's not recommended anymore. But salt water is used often for healing effect in many ways. Basically, salt prevents infection. It's not a cure, but it can stop the spread. So in ancient times, they used salt for healing as well as for food storage. Back then, salt, is repre salt also represented friendship and deep relationships. Its value was such that once you consumed someone else's salt, you were friends for life. In the parlance of the, in the practices of the day, God meant every salt offering to be a reminder of the divinely desired good relationships that were hoped for with humanity and the earth. The salt offering was a reminder of the divine relationship with humanity and the earth. This is called the salt covenant. The salt covenant with God was referenced several times in other stories that I'm not going to go into, but you can look them up. Uh, and there are, there are several variations, but the theme is consistent. The concepts were in the culture of the minds in Jesus' day. Which brings us to Matthew's gospel. You are the salt of the earth. Matthew's audience of Christian believing Jews knew the backstory. When God required salt in their offerings, it wasn't just a random demand. It was twice symbolic. It showed the relationship God wanted and with the people and how God wanted the people to be the preservative and healers of the earth. Ding, 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 ding. But wait, there's more. This applies to us. When we hear Jesus saying to his disciples, you are the salt, the message to us people who may think of ourselves as lowly, the message to us lowly people is, we are precious. We are loved, we are valued, and we can save and heal this world. We are hoped by God to be the preserving and healing influence of our realm. We are God's hope for healing and saving and preserving in our realm. Without good influences, this world will become spoiled. Corruption, evil, inequity, unfair competition, phobias, isms, disease, viruses, bacteria, whatever you may call the infection, can conquer us if it's missed or ignored. But according to God's perspective, the medicine comes by listening to these words, not with hearing only, but with the brains and bodies that you have and I have. We are the people who are the salt. We are the ones to preserve and heal and bring goodness. So how's that going for us? Let's renew our strength and our calling and keep at it. I have only one example to share, and it comes from something a young black man posted a few days ago, regardless of whether he knows it, he's talking about the salt of the earth. Listen to what he wrote, this short paragraph. This is also my black history. My grandfather, Gons Lee Twitty, was a family farmer, 
landowner, and forestry specialist. He was also the first African American elected to the South Carolina State Democratic Party Executive Committee. And he was one of the founding members of the Federation of Southern, Southern Cooperatives. The co-op, the cooperatives, the co-op provided poor black farmers with monetary relief and mutual aid. This co-op still exists today. And he once said to my cousin Michael, I picked cotton so you could pick up a book. Genius. On this, communi on this communion Sunday, I think it's good for us to remember the Rolling Stones song with a verse that goes, let's drink to the hardworking people. Let's think of the lowly of birth. Spare a thought for the ragtaggy people. Let's drink to the salt of the earth. Let's not only drink to them, Let's honor them and God. Can we do that? Yes, we can. You are the salt of the earth. Thanks be to God. Amen. Now is the time in our service when we offer our joys, our thanksgivings, and our concerns. And we say a word or two here and understand that there certainly can be more said. But we join you in prayer knowing that God knows as we are here. But enacting the community is a way to bring us all into the liminal space, that holy space, that thin space in which we are together and supporting one another as we are gathered. So I ask first, are there concerns that you will offer? And then I'll say a collect prayer, and then we will all say, God, receive our prayer. Are there concerns you'll offer at this time? Yes. Was who? Buck? Ray's friend Buck? had a heart attack yesterday and is being treated at Desert Regional. Other concerns? Yes, Jim? I don't see Alan Weaver, so I'm going to keep Alan in our prayers. Actually, well, we will keep Alan in our prayers, and there's Alan in his pew. Um, so we, we do. We keep Alan in our prayers as Alan recovers from a, a little bout this week. Other concerns? Prayers for Peter Steele, who is feeling ill at this time. Yes, Sean? Sean's mom, uncle, and sister going through a difficult time. Let us think of the people that are being attacked with bombs uh, on this day uh, anywhere around the world uh, where there is strife and where there is trouble. And let us think of the people that are feeling that sort of strife and trouble that seems like bombs in their own homes and lives. Alan? Ray. I mean, Ray. <laughs> Sorry. We pray for our nation's leaders. Ron? Don't, we pray that we won't let things like balloons distract us from our justice work. Please watch, dear God, with all who work or watch or weep this day. Keep them in care. Tend the sick. 
give rest to the weary, bless the dying, soothe the suffering, shield the joyous, and all for love's sake. God, receive our prayer. The joys and thanksgivings you'll offer today. Jim? So we'll talk after the service about <laughs> the seven deadly sins um, and pay particular attention to one of them. The, I, I said, we'll just talk. We'll, 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 we'll just talk. Um, so we are grateful for folks visiting us and, and know that that's part of our mission is to be here in the Coachella Valley to receive our siblings um, in faith as well as in our denomination. Yes, Steve. Van Allen is the name. We're grateful for him and for the work that he has done at the Well in the Desert, which for others is a uh, services organization and feeding organization for unhoused and working poor folks here in the Coachella Valley and an organization that we've been related to since the first year of Bloom. We're grateful for his work and wish him well in caring for his mother. Other joys and thanksgivings. Mike? So for the, all the folks working to, um, to, to bring Spring Fling to life this year on um, March 10th, 2023, from 5.30 on at the pavilion. Oh, um, and, and, and also knowing, I mean, the gratefulness is appreciated, that this is the, one, the most significant fundraising event we do in order to ensure the vitality of our ministry. Um, in, 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 in future years to come. So we're, we're grateful for that, for the people in Spring Fling and for volunteers doing other things. Yes, Dodie. Uh, the, uh, the thanks for our congregation that has been resting their time. On a big day, there might be eight people in the chapel. So we, we give thanks for the ministry. What's the name of the congregation? Lafresh and Limerick United Church of Canada. We give thanks for their vital ministry. That's why I said vital. <laughs> Other joys and thanksgivings. Sean? Sean? Okay, so we give thanks for your, um, um, in, a, in, a, in a car wreck kind of situation coming out of that and, and it not being so bad. And we pray in relationship development for things to go on as well as possible. So we pray for those. Other joys and thanksgivings. We're grateful from, uh, 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 from uh, Saskatoon 
Hello, Bob and Marie. And we're grateful for a uh, uh, happy Sunday for, from warm Saskatoon, um, they say. Well, good for you. Nice. Or if you're over there, good for you. I saw here. Some, yes, go. Uh-huh. Okay. Great. Bill Davison is a member of Bloom who has moved uh, north and he's very happy in his new home and with all of his new appliances. <laughs> Maybe it's the fact that he actually has the owner's manuals, <laughs> which is not always the case <laughs> with, with our appliances. Where did I put that, that manual, Tim? So we're thankful for the person on the other end of the phone who's, who's helping us, and they're trying. You mean the customer service rep? Is that what customer you're talking about? Customer service rep or anybody to whom I ask a question. Okay. <laughs> anybody who Tim asks a question, we're thankful for how they're able to help him, as well as in our own situations. We're grateful for those folks. Your hand is open wide to satisfy the needs of all creation, loving God. Keep us always thankful for your loving providence and help us be faithful stewards of your good and abundant gifts. God, receive our prayer. Now we receive our morning offering as a way to underwrite the mission, vision, values of this congregation. Our ushers will be coming forward and passing the basket uh, as, as we prepare ourselves for doing that, let us sing this response in our God, I'll be ever thankful, and then we will receive our offertory music and a little more time for meditation. Please pray along silently as I read our prayer of dedication. You flavor our actions, O God, and illumine our minds. May the wisdom you give us 
lead others to know the living Christ. May our lives be seasoned by service and the light of our good works bring glory to your name. We have received an abundance of your grace and mercy. Accept now our offerings as we go forth to serve you. In all that we accomplish, let us give you the honor your name is due. Amen. Please rise as you are able in celebration as we sing the doxology. be seated. As we join together in the great thanksgiving, let us read together responsively these words of our liturgy for Holy Communion. God is with you. And also with you. Lift, let us lift our hearts. We lift them up to our God. Let us give thanks and praise. This is a good and joyful thing to do. Blessed are you, God of radiant hope rising from the shadows of the world's pain. Your, your light, light breaks, breaks forth like, like the dawn. dawn. Your, your glory rises from east to west. west. Rejoicing in the freedom you give, we seek today the inspiration of your spirit. Whatever this day may bring, open our lips to sing praise for the wonder of creation and the wonder of our lives. Blessed are you, O God, we will praise you now and forever through Jesus Christ, our Savior, teacher, sibling, and friend. Blessing and praise to God forever. It is right and good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give you praise, all loving God, creator of energy and matter and heaven and earth. Long ago, you renewed your rainbow covenant with every living creature by entering our realm in the person of Jesus. He gave us your unconditional love and this mandate. I, I give, give you a, a new, new commandment, commandment love, love one another. another. And, and you're, you're to, to love one, one another the way, way I have loved you. you. This, this is how, how all will know that you're my disciples, disciples that, that you truly love one, one another. another. Therefore, we celebrate you joining our voices with the wind and the streams, the animals and the flowers, the living and the dead, the stars and the planets, and all the company of creation, the great cloud of witnesses who forever sing their unending hymn to proclaim your glory. Along with them we sing... Santo, 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 mi core te adora, mi core te sabe decir, Santo eres Dios, holy, 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 my heart, my heart adores you. My heart is glad to say the words, you are holy God. We remember that on the night Jesus was betrayed by one whom he loved, the night before he was killed by ones who feared him, he sat at table with his friends, women and men and children, sharing the feast of the Passover, which is the celebration of the liberation of God's people. Remembering God's power, Jesus took bread, and after he had given thanks and blessed it, 
he broke it, saying, This, this is, is my body and my life for, for you and with you. you. Take, Take it, all of you, and, and do this in remembrance of me. After dinner, Jesus took the Elijah cup, the cup that was traditionally reserved for the Holy One to come. But instead of waiting, Jesus passed it to them as it is now being passed on to us. And he said, This is the cup of the new covenant. It is the cup of justice and peace poured out for all. Drink of it, all of you, and do this remembering me. Each time that we break bread together, we participate in the body of the risen Christ, for we are the body of the risen Christ. And each time we share this cup, we participate in the new community, for we are God's hope of the new community. For this, we ask your blessing. Pour out your spirit on us and on these gifts of grain and grape, and that in this sharing, we recognize Christ in our midst. This, this offering, offering of praise and thanksgiving is an offering, offering of us to you. Hasten the day when the prophet's dreams come to pass, when justice rolls down like waters and nations no longer threaten each other. Neither shall they learn war anymore. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Jesus Christ, bread of life, all who come to you will not hunger. Jesus Christ, cup of love, all who trust in you will not thirst. These are the gifts of God for the people of God presented both here and in your homes. In this community, we share an inclusive communion. You need not be a member of this congregation or any community of faith to join us at this table as we are gathered here as well as where we are sitting in our seats. We share this sacrament historically in the way that it has been handed to us from those who came before us from that very first special evening we, we sat, share this globally, knowing that there are people all around the earth in this moment or close to this moment, which are doing the same thing that we are doing. We know that we don't agree with them and they probably don't agree with us on every little bit, but we know that in this action, we are one in Christ's ministry. We share this personally. Not everyone uh, shares the exact same understanding of this action and we simply ask that people approach this action in ways that are meaningful to you. And therefore, we, we do this for um, renewal, beginning again, many different kinds of ways, always knowing that it's something that unites us in a common mission. For we believe that Christ is the host. Christ sets the table, and Christ welcomes all. So let us be together as our table is ready. Now in this day, because we are continuing to be mindful of the pandemic situation, we have a, our, our leadership has recommended that we continue for at least through this month, um, uh, that we continue to use the little um, chalices, the mini chalices that you have. Um, so I'm going, do you have them? No, you don't. So I will uh, serve a cup and bread here, and Loretta and Tim will serve me. Um, and we will together receive the bread, and then we will together, you will turn over your cup and open the juice side and receive the juice. Through that time, as we are together in these moments of meditation and sacrament, Malcolm will be providing our communion music, which is a traditional spiritual entitled, Give Me Jesus. The breath.
in the cup of reconciliation. In our prayer after communion, we pray together the prayer of Jesus using the words that are most familiar and comforting to you. We have a version here that with lots of flexibility in the bulletin, let us now pray aloud together the prayer as we, uh, we find it most comforting and, um, and familiar. Our Father, Mother, Creator in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our sending him today is for the healing of the nations. Let us rise as we are able and sing together. Our worship is ended, our service begins. What does God need from us? Simply do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with your God. God be your comfort, your strength. God be your hope and your support. God be your light and your way. And the blessing of God, creator, redeemer, and giver of life remain with you now and forever. My dear friends in faith, will you go from here and be the people of God in Christ's name? We will. Amen. Let us offer to one another signs of grace and peace, and go in peace. Amen. Amen.